Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
seated. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Dalhousie University's Spring Convocation for our 2022 graduating class from the Faculty of Science. My name is Frank Harvey. It is a distinct honor and privilege to be serving as Dalhousie's Provost and Vice President Academic, and I'll be your MC for today. We are absolutely thrilled to be celebrating this great occasion in person. I would like to ask Elder Catherine Martin, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement, to deliver the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. Kwe. Jalasi. Okay. Medawa Lokdiok. Probably um, will he exit boo. So in the language of this land, I've just said Kwe, hello. Like as if I haven't seen you forever the way you've seen your children and your relatives here. And uh, I've told you it's a beautiful day and um, welcome to all of you. Uh, as a descendant of the signatory of the 1752 Peace and Friendship Treaty. It's an honor to welcome you to the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq, of the Olnu, who, are, who we really are, the Olnu of this territory, and of the nation. Um, the ter seven hunting districts go from Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, PEI, parts of Maine, and parts of Quebec. That's our original, traditional, seven hunting districts. Um, at this time, I congratulate the graduates. I've been there a few times, and that's why I asked if I could drum, so I could help your heart go to the level it should be at when you go up on that stage, so you don't trip or whatever. So just breathe in, and, and you'll do it. You'll do it, and congratulations. Um, I'd also like to um, ask that we take a moment of silence in gratitude for the privilege that we are all having in our lives, especially here in Canada and here in Mi'kmaq, and uh, to think about those who um, have recently lost their beautiful children in a tragic, horrific event, and their they need our thoughts, they need our prayers, and it will you know, make us feel good to offer that. So at this point, I'd just ask for a moment of silence. Walaliuk, 
Emsit Nogama, thank you, all my relations. Thank you very much, uh, Kathy, for that beautiful uh, welcome. And I know you have to leave <clears throat> shortly after the start of the ceremonies, but we'll see you later on today. Thank you again. I would also like to begin by acknowledging that Dalhousie University and our community benefit from and sit on Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. We are very grateful uh, at Dal Dalhousie for our partnerships and our friendships across our campuses our faculties and our administrative units. We are grateful for our community leaders, our elders and residents, our Indigenous Advisory Council, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement, Indigenous Student Center, Indigenous Research Facilitator in our VP Research Office, Indigenous Health Program, <clears throat> and Inclusive Pathways to the Medical and Health Professions, and many other critically important initiatives and partnerships across our campuses, our faculties, and our administrative units. We will continue to work on and build on these critically important relationships and friendships because we are all treaty people and we take these words and our commitment to truth and reconciliation very seriously. We would also like to acknowledge the histories, the contributions and the legacies of the African Nova Scotian people and communities who have been here for over 400 years. We are grateful for our African Nova Scotian Advisory Council, our director and our Director of African Nova Scotian Community Engagement. <clears throat> there are two times on a university campus that are particularly significant. The first, of course, is at the start of every year when we welcome our new students to their programs and to our campuses. And the second is at the end when we come together as we are today to celebrate the completion of your program. For many, this day comes with a range of different emotions, um, sadness at leaving Dalhousie and your Dal community and your Dal friends, perhaps eagerness to move on from Dal and Nova Scotia, possibly a little fear and anxiety about the future, and certainly gratitude uh, for all those who supported, supported you along the way. But among the different emotions that you and your classmates are working through right now, I hope you feel pride. You've accomplished what many can only dream of and you should be proud of your many significant and noteworthy achievements. Completing your degree, particularly in these unique and challenging circumstances of a global pandemic, certainly gives us all many reasons to be incredibly proud of you and your accomplishments. Convocation marks the culmination of years of very, very hard work. You've spent hundreds of hours in classes and lectures and labs. You've read thousands of pages from required texts and journal articles and research reports. You've extracted thousands of pages of notes from those books and those articles. You've drafted hundreds of pages for essays or research and lab reports and other projects. And you've completed hundreds of quizzes and midterms and final exams. You've analyzed and visualized data of many kinds. You've participated in many in-class and out-of-class experimental research projects. Many of you have gained extra experience by uh, taking summer field courses or study abroad programs or completing co-op terms. You've developed skills and expertise with online and in-person learning and have adapted as new challenges came your way throughout your entire degree. And you've learned how to navigate the life sciences building, which is incredible. <laughs> And you've made many, many good friends. But you've also spent a good part of the last several years balancing school and work and social lives. You've been dealing with fears and anxieties about your programs and about your future. You've been dealing with relationships and social pressures and maybe a little pressure from your parents and family. You've been managing your budget uh, and in many cases completing your degree while juggling one, perhaps even two or three jobs to cover tuition. And I'm sure you've all dealt with personal and emotional crises and losses, and perhaps losses associated with the pandemic. Your graduation today speaks volumes about your capacity and your willingness to succeed anywhere by applying the life lessons, the skills, the knowledge, the passions, and the life choices that you've been collecting and working through over the last several years. Again, convocation marks the end of years of very, 
very hard work. Don't let anyone tell you after graduation that it's, quote, time to get in the game. You've been in the game, including through a pandemic, for several years. These are the reasons that we're celebrating today. These are the reasons your family and your friends and the entire Dalhousie community are so incredibly proud of you. You inspire us. So feel free to make some noise. Congratulations. <laughs> Family and friends, although we would typically encourage you to work your way around the auditorium and take as many pictures as you'd like for health and safety reasons, we will ask that you please uh, stay in your seats, stand up and take as many pictures as you'd like. Feel free to share them on hashtag, uh, through uh, hashtag Dalgrad. Um, the convocation is being webcast, so you can access and share uh, the uh, convocation through the Dal uh, website. Now I'd like to take just a, a moment to introduce those, introduce you to those individuals who will be participating in the convocation ceremony today, starting with uh, Scott Bryson, our Chancellor. <laughs> Dr. Deep Saini, our President and Vice Chancellor. Dr. Louise Spiteri, our Interim Chair of Senate. Dr. Charles McDonald, Dean of the Faculty of Science. Donna Bourne Tyson, our Dean of Libraries. And if I can just take a brief uh, moment to acknowledge that this will be Donna's very final uh, convocation. Uh, she has uh, been serving Dalhousie in the role of Dean of Libraries for uh, 11 years now, and I just want to thank you on behalf of faculty, staff, and students for your outstanding contributions to Dalhousie Dalhousie. <laughs> Elder Catherine Martin, our Director of Indigenous Community Engagement. <laughs> Angela Siegel, our Associate Vice President Academic, who She uh, brought in the graduates uh, carrying our new Dawn staff, brought them into uh, their seats, so thank you, Angela. Um, also on the platform party today and in the audience are many other uh, faculty and staff and administrators, including uh, your VPs, your associate deans, and many other, uh, many other members who have played such a... And, uh, Marty Leonard, our amazing <laughs> Dean of Graduate Studies. <laughs> very sorry, Marty, very sorry. Uh, thank you. Um, also on the platform party, as, as I was saying, uh, and in the audience are uh, many other faculty, staff, and administrators who have played such a critical role in the success of our students and in the academic excellence of our program. So if I can ask you all to stand. This is our opportunity to thank them. And one more round of applause for Marty Leonard, the Dean of Graduate Studies. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Provost Fabi. Will graduates please rise? Mr. Chancellor, as Chair of the Senate of Dalhousie University, I ask you to confer degrees on those candidates whose names have been approved by Senate. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit to the respective degrees and diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto those candidates who have fulfilled the requirements of that degree and whose names have been approved by the Senate. Admito vos 
at Grodham. Congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. I'd now like to invite Dr. Charles McDonald, Dean of the Faculty of Science, Dr. Marty Leonard, Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies, and Wesley Given, uh, Giffen, sorry, an order uh, with the Fountain School of Performing Arts to present the candidates who are here today receiving degrees. Mr. Chancellor, as Dean, I am pleased to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for diplomas and degrees within the Faculty of Science. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to, re to receive the Diploma in Meteorology. Erica Diana Ranger, Diploma in Meteorology. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, this concludes, uh, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Diploma in Meteorology. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Arts. Aidan Stewart Gregory Chrisom, Bachelor of Arts, major in economics. <laughs> Kaxing Da, major in economics. <laughs> Katie Larisha Bagum Eldred, honors in economics with first class honors. Victoria Madison Gray, double major in mathematics and music. <laughs> Yu Shi Han, major in economics. <laughs> Dawson McFeely, major in economics. Jinyan, double major in economics and international developmental studies. <laughs> Ofang Zhang, major in economics. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Arts. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Bachelor of Science. ATM Akdenes, Honors in Economics. Justice Calvin Anderson, major in environmental science. Sarah Atbai, major in mathematics. Marta June Shea Boersma. Major in Mathematics Cooperative Program. <laughs> Jacqueline Grace Boone, Major in Actual Science, Distinction. <laughs> Fabian Bong, with honors in both Chemistry and Computer Science, First Class Honors, University Medal in Chemistry.
Emily Kaylin Burke with honors in chemistry and first class honors. <laughs> Kathleen Louise Clark with honors in earth sciences and first class honors. John Desmond Corston with honors in both physics and computer science and first class honors. Huto <laughs> Kui with honors in statistics. Callista Ann Damon, with major in Earth Sciences. <laughs> Heidi Dooling, with honors in both chemistry and biochemistry and molecular, molecular biology, with first class honors. Salumata Diakide, major in statistics. <laughs> Samantha Lauren Dudra, with honors in chemistry cooperative program and first class honors. <laughs> Christopher James Ford, major in environmental science. Haley Marie Sidney Fulton, Bachelor of Science with Distinction. Cameron Jacqueline Gallagher, with honors envir in environmental science and first class honors. Yu Meng Gong, honor major in chemistry. Ming Xiao Gong, major in statistics. <laughs> Alexandra Sarah Sidney Guthro, major in actual science with distinction. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Grace, major in actual science. Aiden Gay, major in chemistry. <laughs> Jacob Gordon Hare, double major in mathematics and computer science with distinction. <laughs> Emma Mackenzie Hines, major in environmental science. Yichuan Hu, with honors in actual science. <laughs> Xu Hua, with honors in economics. <laughs> Emily Marie Lanigan, with honors in environmental science. Michael Christopher LeBlanc, with major in economics. <laughs> Jia Li, with major in economics, with distinction. <laughs> Jia Yi Li, with major in economics. Jade Lauder, with major in statistics and distinction. <laughs> C. 
senior ma. Double major in chemistry and environment, sustainability and society with distinction. Got it, yeah. Lucas James McKay, major in environmental science cooperative program. Ainsley Claire Stone McCool, Bachelor of Science with Distinction. Matthew McKee, with honors in economics and first class honors. Simon Meekers, with honors in both chemistry and theater and first class honors. <laughs> Roxanne Lauren Mercer, major in environmental science. <laughs> Abby Millard, major in environmental science with distinction. James Elgin Monday, with honors in both mathematics and physics, first class honors, a university medal in physics, and the Sir William Young Gold Medal in mathematics. <laughs> Emma Catherine Murphy, major in earth sciences. Joshua Mignogle, Bachelor of Science and Major in Biology. <laughs> Ming Guen, Major in Mathematics with Distinction. <laughs> Spencer Mark Edward Osborne, Major in Physics. Georgia Mary Palov, major in actual science. <laughs> Daniel Perry, major in actual science with distinction. Megan Aline Poulton, major in environmental science with distinction. <laughs> Michael Peter Powell, with honors in both earth sciences and biology and first class honors. Zarnab Kumar, major in economics. York Yunfan Ki, Bachelor of Science. Erica Diana Ranger, major in physics. Adrian Friedrich Gordon Rumson, with honors in chemistry and first class honors. Jack Ryan, major in economics with distinction. Morgan Schneer, major in chemistry. <laughs> Ed 
Kara Maurice Domingo Seno, major in chemistry. Wu Ye Shi, double major in environmental science and environment, sustainability, and society. Char Ho Shin, with honors in physics and first class honors. <laughs> Jessica Frances Sparin, with honors in chemistry cooperative program and first class honors. <laughs> Ailish Sullivan, Double major in environmental science and biology. <laughs> Ho Tong Sun, double major in economics and statistics. Won Ting Sun, double major in statistics and economics. <laughs> Yi Fan Sun, double major in mathematics and statistics. <laughs> Sarah Elizabeth Swim, major in environmental science with distinction. Braden Mitchell Thomas, major in environmental science. <laughs> Emily Thurston, Bachelor of Science with distinction. <laughs> Waxen Wang, major in environmental science. Jung Wong, with honors in both statistics and economics, and first class honors. <laughs> Justin Peter Ware, major in physics. Nathaniel Jacob Williams Penny, major in chemistry. Su Zhao Wu, Bachelor of Science and Major in Engineering and Econ. <laughs> Fan Xiao, Major in Environmental Science. <laughs> Yi Fan Xi, Major in Statistics. Chen Xu, double major in mathematics and computer science. <laughs> Kiao Wen Xu, double major in statistics and computer science with distinction. Wu Xiao Yang, double major in statistics and economics with distinction. <laughs> Jonah Malcolm Yap, major in statistics. Jordan Marie Yates, major in economics. <laughs> Yi 
ZU with honors in both statistics and actual science, first class honors. Hao Yi Jai, major in economics. Ren Xiang Zhang, major in economics. <laughs> Ray Xiang Zhao, major in economics with distinction. <laughs> Yu Lin Zhao, major in economics. Yuki Zhao with honors in economics. <laughs> Yulan Zhu, major in mathematics. <laughs> Jie Sun. Double major in economics and statistics. Lang Han Tan, major in mathematics. Jin Zhang, with honors in economics and first class honors. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Science. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the following candidate has also completed the requirements for the Diploma in Meteorology. Shunit Carr, Diploma in Meteorology. Mr. Chancellor, as Dean, I'm delighted to be here today to celebrate the accomplishments of candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for degrees within the Faculty of Graduate Studies. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Arts. Yong Pei Chai, Master of Arts in Economics. <laughs> Wen Hao Chen, Master of Arts in Economics. <laughs> Muhammad El Waraki in Economics. Emily Hansen with Economics. <laughs> Dao Wei Li with Economics. <laughs> Benjamin Milley with Economics. Allison Jui Xiao with economics. <laughs> Erica Taylor with economics. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Arts.
Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Developmental Economics. Yao Liang An, Master of <laughs> Developmental Economics. Ko Si Sa Chiru Arenze, Master of Developmental Economics. Raghav Dugra, Master of Developmental Economics. <laughs> Riyong Fang, Master of Developmental Economics. <laughs> Azad Haider, Master of Developmental Economics. Andrew William Johnston, Master of Developmental Economics. <laughs> Xiaoxing Liu, Master of Developmental Economics. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Developmental Economics. Mr. Chancellor, the following candidates are here today to receive the Master of Science. Masianchi Atans, Chemistry. <laughs> Rebecca Ann Cavanaugh, Physics. <laughs> Isabel Sierra Curtis, Chemistry. Robert Drake Riley, Chemistry. Christopher Robert Sutherland, Physics. Joseph Albert Richer Weatherby, Chemistry. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of those candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Science. Mr. Chancellor, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest earned degree awarded by the university, and as such it represents the culmination of the candidate's educational achievement. The following candidates, through thesis and examination, have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Further, Mr. Chancellor, the awarding of the PhD degree completes a long cooperation between the student and their thesis advisor, and we are pleased in this ceremony to also recognize the supervisor of the doctoral candidate, and we ask that the supervisor stand and remain standing as the graduate crosses the stage. And following the hooding, I'd like to welcome all of you to join us on the stage. Nancy Khalil, Doctor of Philosophy in Mathematics with Supervisor David Ion.
Ryan Thomas McGuire, Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry with Supervisor Mark Stradioto. Lauren Thompson, Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry with Supervisor Jeff Don. Mr. Chancellor, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. It is now my pleasure to call upon uh, Dean Marty Leonard to present the recipient of the Governor General's Gold Medal. Could I ask Isabel Curtis to come up here so that we can award her a medal and embarrass her? <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, the Governor General's Gold Medal is awarded each year to the most outstanding master's candidate in the natural sciences and engineering. And it is my delight today to present the 2022 winner, Ms. Isabel Curtis, who graduated today with a Master of Science in Chemistry. Here's the embarrassing part. More to come. Ms. Curtis's master's thesis was on chemical processes converting solar energy into hydrogen fuel using water. I don't really know what that means, but I do know that this research is incredibly important because it can ultimately be used to help provide a green fuel alternative to carbon-based fuels. Ms. Curtis's research has been published in one of the leading journals in her field, with a second paper also being reviewed for publication. And I do know that this is quite impressive for someone just completing a master's. In addition to showing excellence in her research, Ms. Curtis also shone in the classroom. She received the top mark in a challenging multidisciplinary class designed for the students to use concepts learned in the classroom and apply them to solve real, real world problems. And many students struggled to do this, but Ms. Curtis was more than able to show her knowledge to solve any challenge she was giving. And the course instructor referred to her performance in the course as scientific brilliance. As Ms. Curtis's supervisor, Dr. Mita Dasog, wrote in her letter of nomination, Ms. Curtis's achievements during her graduate program in the research lab, the classroom, and beyond highlight her overall excellence. And she is truly deserving of the Governor General's Gold Medal, and we couldn't agree more. So, Mr. Chancellor, we are proud to recognize the achievements of Ms. Isabel Curtis of the Department of Chemistry with the 2022 Governor General's Gold Medal in the Natural Sciences and Engineering. It is now my pleasure to call upon Dean McDonald to present the recipient of the Avery Prize. <laughs> Good 
we all have to catch a flight to China uh, to uh, deliver the recipient. Uh, thank you, Dean McDonald. Apologies. We will. Uh, Oh, thanks. This is, uh, um, uh, we are honored to present the Avery Prize to Jackie Boo for her performance. <laughs> Little blips in the presentation. Please join me once again in congratulating all of our graduate students. And also a very brief thank you to Wesley Giffen, our excellent order today for that performance. Thank you. I would now like to call attention to the families and friends of our graduates today. We know that convocation is a, a very important occasion for you as well. And I'm sure that uh, all of us here recognize the important role your love and support played along the way. So we would like to express our gratitude to you for that role, for the role you played. Can I ask the graduates to please stand? And if I can ask the onstage party to stand as well. Graduates, your family and friends have been applauding you and making some awesome noises all day throughout the convocation ceremony today. It's now your opportunity and our opportunity to make some noise to thank you for your love and support of our graduates today. It is my pleasure now to invite Dr. Deep Saini. Oh, please sit. I'm sorry. <laughs> so in the first convocation, the first of 17, uh, I came to the stage. The first thing I should have said is, please sit. I proceeded to go through my introductory comments, were, which were pretty long. In addition to the length of time, we were all standing for all the graduates to come in. So that was the first delivery of the uh, provost's comments, and that failed, so thank you for sitting. Um, I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Deep Saini to the podium to deliver the president's remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harvey, and Mr. Chancellor, families and friends, and distinguished guests, and most importantly, our graduates. What an honor and an immense pleasure it is today to be standing here finally in front of you to be able to have this ceremony in person, enjoy this convocation. What a marvelous occasion. Class of 2022, I am largely going to speak to you today, although everybody else is very welcome to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> you know it very well, too well in fact, that it would be an understatement to say that the last couple of years did not quite play out how any one of us would have imagined. So this ceremony, which is normally a celebration of your transition from students to graduates and alumni, has been more than ever before in my memory at least, a celebration of your achievements and your perseverance. And perseverance in this particular case in science was a special, special achievement in my view. This milestone is a very well-earned personal recognition of your efforts and your abilities, and very deservedly a source of great pride both for you and your supporters, many of them present here today, and I'm sure others who support you who are not here. Regardless of the incessant challenges that the circumstances threw at you since the beginning of 2020, here you are. Despite what you were given, look at what you made of it and what you've done with it. You met your goal, and you're here holding in your hands 
the testament to your perseverance, resilience, grit, and determination. Now, that is remarkable. So in honor of all that, those achievements, let's put our hands together and say bravo. You haven't had it easy, but I dare to imagine that someday you will look back and realize, if you don't already do so, that this experience has made you stronger. Perhaps it's made you more resilient, more creative, more innovative, more empathetic, more civic-minded, more conscious of how the actions of one impact many, and more committed to striving for a better future. And these are exactly the traits that our world needs today. You are graduating at a time of great uncertainty and profound change. Over these past two years, the phrase, the new normal, has become very normal. In fact, it's become increasingly a familiar part of our lexicon. However, if you think about it, and you look back into the history, you will realize that there's actually nothing unique about a society entering a new normal, nothing unique in itself, at least. Um, our history, human history, is replete with so many turning points that are of similar magnitude. So what I, we may ask is unique about this particular experience that we've had? Well, the uniqueness of this particular new normal resides in the confluence of some daunting and often wicked challenges that it coincides with. <clears throat> Let's mention a few. Climate change and its looming impact, not actually looming, it's here, it's with us. The urgency to recognize that there have been many historical wrongs and they must be righted forthwith. New global public health challenges that you are all too familiar with. We know that we have to feed a population of over 9 billion people that's projected to happen without destroying the planet. So protection of our environment is a major preoccupation. The challenges that we hear about that our democracy, peace, and global order faces, and so on. There are many others. So the task in front of you will not be easy, and it will indeed demand a great deal of you. But amidst all these uncertainties and challenges, there will be unparalleled opportunities to seize. And that's where I want to focus. In some ways, we are at the cusp of the greatest creative destruction in modern history. To make the point, what lies ahead of you, what I think I'd like you to focus on, please allow me to share a personal story that uh, came to my mind. It's an old story that, uh, that came to my mind uh, last week on Monday at our first convocation where our chancellor and I were finally, after two years of wait, installed in our position. Install, installing means it's, it's not like installing a sink in the kitchen or anything, anything like that. It's installing a president or a chancellor means we were sworn in at that first ceremony. <clears throat> and as I was sitting there and reflecting on the moment, um, an old story came to my mind that I want to share with you. I was born a long time ago, 1954, in fact. And that was seven years after India emerged from 200 years of colonial rule and all the exploitation, dispossession, and everything that goes with it. It was a very different country back then, very poor country, in fact. I started school in 1960, and I remember distinctly, very clearly to date, that the room in which we were sitting was a very sparse classroom where the only piece of furniture was a chair for the teacher. The rest of us, the students, we sat cross-legged on the dusty floor. <clears throat> it was in grade six, six years later, that, and in a different school, that I finally got to sit at a kind of pretty um, old and uh, and, uh, and fairly damaged desk, but I remember that desk as well. It was a big deal for me to be able to sit at a desk um, uh, in the school. So fast forward from there, 12 years more, from 1960, I entered the university in 1972. I was the first 
to go to a university, not just not just in my immediate family, but in the whole clan as far as I could see. So I got through, the, the, through that, through, from, through my bachelor's, did my master's, finished my master's degree in 1977, and then had an incredible, unimaginable, unimaginable opportunity for somebody with my background. I got an opportunity to go to Australia to do a PhD. I had the admission and the opportunity to work with a world-renowned scientist, but no visa. No visa because my scholarship would not start for another six months, and I was insisting that I wanted to go right away, not waste any time. Anyway, in parallel with that, I had just married um, a wonderful lady who I wish she was here listening to this, who was in the university. We had been seeing each other for three years, and we decided to get married because I was anticipating to go to Australia, and I wanted her to come with me. And we got married, but this visa wasn't coming through, and I was getting frustrated. Maybe I'll not be able to go to Australia to start my PhD. And I started applying for jobs, and at the same time, this job opportunity emerged with Glaxo Chemical Company. I'm a scientist like you. Now, scale in India, scale of everything is very unique. Um, I was told that there were 11,000 applicants for eight positions. That's the scale in India. Anyway, got through a number of um, tests and all sorts of other things and interviews, and finally, on this lovely morning in Delhi, I was told that I had the job. I took a taxi from there to the embassy, uh, Australian embassy, and they told me I had the visa. <laughs> so that was the, one of the greatest conundrums I have faced in my life. Uh, we lived about close to 400 kilometers away from New Delhi, and I took a train back, and I was reflecting, what should I do? You know, on this job. And, wow, well, by the way, it was a dream job, fantastic pay, better than a full professor's pay, which, I, as you know very well, I would have gotten, too, if I had finished my PhD, worked as a postdoc, and then toiled for about 15 more years and became a full professor. <laughs> so... It was a very attractive situation, and I came home, and I sat down and talked to my father about it. And I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but in a very dramatic way. Well, I'll tell you the little story. He listened to me, and then he left home, and he came back about half an hour later, and he had a uh, kind of crumbled up brown envelope in his hand, thick one. And he put it in front of me. He said, son, this is my answer. You do what you have to do. And I opened it, and it was 10,000 rupees. Sorry. <clears throat> that was the price of an air ticket to Australia. So anyway, he explained, told me why he felt I should do that, an opportunity to learn, do something more. It was a very risky move. I arrived in Australia with $8 in my pocket because I still had, did not have a scholarship. And I borrowed from an uncle who lived in New Zealand to sustain myself for a few days. You know, about a week later, I got a part-time job. And the rest is history to this day, president of such a prestigious university. Who would have imagined? And this is my second presidency. I was, before coming here, as many of you probably know, I was president of the University of Canberra in Australia. So for a kid from that very basic school to have made it here, that's an enormous journey. That's an incredible journey, unimaginable. I feel like a fraud standing in front of you, honestly. I wasn't meant to be here. But there are two, two, two messages here. One, 
what an incredible country we live in. <laughs> Canada truly is a land of opportunity. <laughs> Unparalleled. But the other story is about going for the unknown, for the risky side. And that's the part that I want to focus on here with you. You are today far, far better equipped to face what lies ahead than I was at that time when I blindly took that flight to Australia without knowing anybody there and with $8 in my pocket. Remember what I said at the beginning. We are at the cusp of the greatest creative destruction in modern history of mankind. Your generation has demonstrated again and again that you have what it takes to overcome extreme circumstances, especially over the last two years. When I see what you have overcome over the past two years, and especially how you have overcome it, and what you have accomplished, and most importantly, what you have become as a result, I feel totally confident that you are up to the task and the world is in very, very competent hands. As you face the future, I have only one piece of advice for you. Focus on the opportunity and especially the opportunity to embrace your responsibilities as a scientist. I spoke about your competent hands that we are in, the world. These hands belong to scientists. I'm one of you. You are trained to be innovators. You are trained to be discoverers. You do many amazing things, but one very important thing that is pertinent to the world we are moving into, that is your critical thinking and your ability to ask critical questions and seek answers and make decisions based on evidence, not unsubstantiated opinion. That is a powerful tool in your hands and a great responsibility in a world that is full of noisy people seeking to impose their opinions over the evidence. Focus on that evidence and you have it in your hands. Exercise this responsibility with confidence and courage as you step into the, into the world and you lead it. Remember, the opportunity is a funny thing. It's a strange thing. When it's coming at you, it looks like a challenge or a risk. It certainly looked like that to me in 1977 when I left for Australia. But when you look in the rear mirror, rear view, rear view mirror, that's when you see the opportunity going away. So learn to recognize that opportunity when it's coming at you as a risk and a challenge. So with that, let me return to what we're doing here today. This is a big day. This is your day. You have just become members of the worldwide community of graduates. You have now also joined the Dalhousie alumni family. This is a distinguished family. It's a group of people that has already left an indelible mark on societies all around the world. I have absolutely no doubt that you will uphold this, this tradition. And in years to come, you too will be achieving great things. And those things will not just be for yourself. You will achieve great things for yourselves, but more importantly, for the world. While you do so, I hope you will retain fond memories of your time here at Dalhousie University and your roots at your alma mater. Our graduates, you are the greatest source of joy and pride for us. So on behalf of Dalhousie University, please accept my heartfelt congratulations and my very best wishes for the brilliant future that I know you richly deserve. Thank you again, congratulations, and please stay in touch. Thank you.
Thank you very much, President Saini. This is the 15th convocation, and one of the privileges I have as provost is to listen to convocation addresses. President Zaini has been presenting presidential remarks at all the convocations, and those remarks are inspiring each and every time, and tailored to each and every graduate class. We found out yesterday that the original scheduled uh, individual who was going to be presenting the convocation address, Kevin Hewitt from the Faculty of Science, missed his flight. Um, and so President Zaney was asked to essentially transform his uh, presidential remarks into a convocation address. In fact, we didn't ask him to do that, but he did. And he took those remarks and he transformed them into a convocation address. And there's a distinction. The strongest addresses are the ones that are personal, occasionally painful. And it's the sharing of that message and the sharing of those stories that uh, are so incredibly inspiring. So I want to thank you, President Sandy, for taking the time to turn your remarks into an address for the students today. Thank you. Graduates, let me be the first to acknowledge that as you leave the auditorium today, you will officially become part of Dalhousie's alumni network of more than 152,000 alumni around the world. This is a wonderful asset, and I hope you take advantage of the connection to the broader Dal community. We invite you to get involved. We invite you to stay involved. Uh, in recognition of your new status, members of the Alumni Association will be presenting you with a Dalhousie uh, alumni pin on the way out of the ceremony today. We hope you wear it with pride. Congratulations again. Welcome to the Dalhousie alumni family. Graduates and guests, uh, the business of convocation is concluded after the singing of O Canada. If you are able, you are requested to remain standing as the academic procession leaves the auditorium. I now invite Chloe Dion, uh, a Dalhousie voice student in the Fountain School of Performing Hearts, uh, performing arts in the singing of O Canada. Thank you. O Canada, our home and native land, true Patriot love in all of us command, car ton bras est porté l'épée, il s'est porté la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, Stand on guard for
हा